So, you will only have time to play with computations in a few cases. And all these cases are going to depend actually on the region. And let me start with the simplest case. The simplest case is case of rectangle. <laughs> so the typical problem is going to be given the rectangle and I will give you the sizes, say three and two. And a function should be given, let's call it f. A function on the whole rectangle. But what you usually have is you don't have a fixed coordinate system. Nobody usually gives it to you. Someone describes a function for you without referring to any coordinate system. And the function can be the distance uh, from a fixed vertex, a fixed corner of this rectangle. And just to have simple integral, I will choose that to be distance squared. That's my function. So for some reason, in well, let me just describe the reason. Uh, if you ever wanted to compute the inertia of a plate, you know what inertia is? It's and it's it's about tendency to prevent this from moving. Right? And there are different inertias uh, preventing this plate from, plate from moving straight. And the other one is preventing it from rotating. So what you may want to consider is rotation of the whole plate around this corner. If someone wants to grab that corner and rotate the whole thing, one would like to compute that inertia that essentially plays the role of mass. Right, with respect to that specific motion. So, what is that inertia going to be for the plate? Well, you usually don't know. And what you do know is inertia of one simple particle that you want to rotate about this fixed point. How do you compute inertia of that particle? How difficult is it to rotate that particle, let's say of mass m, that is that far, d far from the point of rotation? So m d squared, isn't it? So that's exactly the inertia of one particle, of one little piece. But what you have here is a huge piece, right? A, a big plate consisting of a lot of those particles, well then, inertia of that piece is going to be sum of inertias of those particles. Because if you have many of them together, the inertias just add. And that means, if you subdivide the plate into pieces, then you have to look at each piece individually and apply that computation to that piece, and the computation well, involves, you see, the distance squared. So we will relate that abstract double integral problem to the inertia of the plate eventually. But let me stay abstractly without uh, any physics involved. Uh, because my focus now is going to be on computation of double integral. So, uh, the setup now is that you have to find double integral double integral of that function f 
over this region R. So how do you proceed with computation? Well, you first step is definition. Okay, so you say by definition that integral of f is a limit. But in order to write down the limit, you already need some notations. So you have to subdivide the region, whatever the region is, into small pieces. And you have to arrange those pieces. And to arrange those pieces, you need coordinates. So that's the point where you have to introduce coordinate system. And for the rectangle, you usually choose one corner is the origin, and you arrange the axis to go along the side. So let me pretend I'm going difficult way, and although I want to rotate around this vertex, I will choose the origin of the coordinate system at a different vertex. Because the choice of the coordinate system will only affect the complexity of computations, but not the answer. Right? The answer, like the inertia or the double integral, should not depend on how you choose the coordinate system. All right, so with this choice of the coordinate system, what is it that we get? Well, we get the arrangement of all those rectangular pieces by indices i and j according to the coordinate of some point of the center, for example, of the piece. And then the double integral becomes limit as delta a tends to zero. of the sums. So what we have to integrate is the function f. Now considering the piece with indices i and j, you have to compute the function at the point x, i, y, j, and multiply it by multiply that value by delta a. Okay. 